Okay, good morning traders and welcome to this live intraday strategy webinar. Today is Thursday, March 4th. Mike Boutros uh, with you on the horn. Great seeing the room. Agnes, Jay, great to see you guys this morning. So it's been an interesting week, okay? Some dollar crosses, DXY, Euro, uh, even to a degree sterling, falling into some range price action. Then you got Swissy with a breakout. You got gold with a breakdown. Um, Aussie uh, and Kiwi both setting up support at, or both setting up uh, ranges at support. Dollar CAD, same type of deal. Um, so we'll hit all those today and see where the levels are as we head into the first final week of, or the first week, I should say, of March, and certainly tomorrow's non-farm payroll report. So um, again, the menu, DXY, Euro, Swissy, Peso, Gold, Dollar Cat, Aussie Dollar, Kiwi Dollar, SPX, and of course, we cannot forget Bitcoin. Uh, someone was asking about silver this week in the webinar, so I've kind of been tracking that as well. Uh, we'll take a segue into that um, as we get through. All right. Any other questions or trade setups? As always, feel free to throw them on the message board. Here's where we stand on the DXY heading to the close of the week. March in Aussie Kiwi. Aussie Kiwi and Kiwi Cat. Gotcha. So here's what we look like. I don't want to go over this. We've gone over this twice already the week in the webinars, guys. So it's key resistance, right? We're still struggling just below resistance. 91.16 uh, is where I don't want to close the week above uh, to try to validate some sort of near-term breakout. Two steps up, two legs up takes into 92, 91.97. So the levels haven't changed. And again, you've fallen into a near-term range right below resistance. Here's the daily chart. Here's your monthly open. Here's the monthly opening range right below resistance, right? We've been talking about this for a while. There's 91.74, there's 92. That's the big level you'd need to clear. Two equal legs off the low, 50 off the high that we made back in September. Beautiful spot, but it's all about this pivot. While below this region, Okay, <laughs> the immediate advance is vulnerable. So you want to use caution, excuse me, heading into tomorrow's non-farm payroll report. Remember, we're expecting a print of about 182,000, unemployment expected to hold 6.3%. Uh, we'll obviously be looking deeper into the metrics at the labor force participation rate and average hourly earnings to see how that's panning with everyone talking about the inflationary picture, uh, which I just don't see what they're looking at. But um Big, big level here for, for dollar. So nothing's really changed. Here's dollar on the two hour chart. And here's what it looked like last night. We peaked into this this week and we're just setting up a range just below. Okay, we're looking for a break of this range. Bullish inval is going to be 90.37. So if we make it back below the 618 of that near term rally, uh, you're looking for the resumptive move lower. That being said, even if it does bounce lower from here, we're looking for uh, an exhaustion low. The end of the day, it's the pivot back above 91.30 that gets us back on the go here. So looking for evidence of some sort of upslope, right, to give this some character. Haven't really been able to get it. I was looking at this earlier today. I don't know if it's something I would want to operate off of per se. It does continue to highlight 91.30's resistance, continues to highlight near-term support there at the median line. but. Man, oh man, it's 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 a tough call. So watch this range. Again, it's just the first couple of days of the month. We're gonna let this one sit out. What a beautiful, magnificent turn off of beautiful levels in the DXY. It's all about whether we get through this resistance zone. Hey, Iman says, morning, Michael. I'm back to your fabulous setups. Well, great to see you. Great to have you back in the room. Um, Iman, always a pleasure. So that's DXY, okay? I'm gonna leave that where it is because it's kind of the least out of everything we're covering today, it's the least interesting. And to say similar is Euro. So just as DXY is at that resistance, here's Euro dollar on the weekly chart, right at our first key uh, support levels. The two levels we've talked about since the out, uh, the big reversal that we made at the open of the, of the year is 120 and 119.45. We struck 120 here on the decline last month, did not close below, turned just a pip or two ahead of 1945. Uh, and here we are again. So, you know, both levels of contention. We could get some back and forth. We could get some range action, could get some lateral action here. 
bearish invalidation, still 122. Key support still 1945. That's the weekly chart from 1,000 feet up. Noting, as we have already, the building divergence we made into the yearly open. I'm not sure why my yearly open marker is gone here, but let's go ahead and re-add that. Okay. Um, and we're at support, big range. Here's Euro on the daily charts. So within the confines of that pitchfork we've been following since last year, beautiful resistance. Here's the median line, decent inflection along the median line. They've had a couple of dribbles here, but right there. End of the day, there's 1945. Lines up with the high close from August, a basic 236 of the advance off the March lows, and this year's objective February lows, the, the yearly opening range lows are all there. And that's bigger problems for Euro if we break below 1945. So um, near-term resistance, 2147 is near-term bearish inval, 2117 near-term resistance. That's what I showed you guys last night. Here's the scalp. And I wish I was in it. I was not in it. Did not take a position here. I was hoping to get a spike into this zone to, to short. As I told you guys yesterday, here's what the chart looked like. Uh, didn't quite get it, right? That ended up being the high that we made. Uh, we just broke down straight from here. And again, key support still at 120. There's 1945, near-term resistance 2117. 2128, just have a soft target. The February open loses efficacy, right, into the following month. Um, bearish invalid would have to be 2145. So it's 100 pip. 200 pip range that we're really focused on here between 1945 and 2145 for euro. But I left this pitchfork on here just to show you guys how this materialized. Remember, you can always go through the charts and see uh, at the, the precise chart and how it looked earlier as we were coming off resistance. And then again, here's the decline from resistance, break of support, nice hold at former support turned resistance. So I just wanted to leave that on there to show you guys the inflection there, continue to highlight that region at 2117 for resistance. Questions on Euro. All right, so range, range, and DXY and Euro, one and two, uh, keep those in focus. What's a breakout trade this month, or this week rather? I, well, I could say this month also. Um, it's gonna be Swissy. It's gonna be Swissy, look at this thing. So we'll take you to the weekly charts first. Remember the level that we talked about, 90-90, 90-80. Here it is. We halted there last week and closed. Boy, oh boy, we said we wanted to see a breakout and an acceleration. That's exactly what we got. So now now kind of confirms a breakout of that 90-90, 90-80 key fib zone we've been watching for so long. Confirms a break of the trend line resistance off last year's high. Um, and we're essentially approaching the highs that we made back in September. So from the weekly chart, what I want you to focus on here, 91.87 is support. OK, I would like to see a weekly close above that. Obviously, it's Thursday. We'll see how this pans out. But that's a level you want to see. It's the 2018 lows. It's last year's opening range lows before the final break in July there. Big level. First top side target from a weekly standpoint doesn't really come until 93.20s. Basic 38.2 of the entire drop off the highs from 2019. So clear and present danger. Uh, for the Swissy here as dollar Swiss rips higher. That's on the weekly charts. Here's the daily chart. And here's what I want to show you last night. I was saying, well, look, I mean, the breakout is in overbought territory, even on the weekly charts, or excuse me, on the daily charts here. You could see that we were breaking to overbought territory yesterday and we're testing uptrend resistance. Here's the breach of uptrend resistance. If this is legit, we should continue to see acceleration here. Again, 93.22 on the upside, 93.37 is a, is a 1618 off the low. Near-term support, 91.60. Bullish inval, right back at 90, 90, 90.80. Here's the intraday chart right? Topside breach of uptrend resistance can oftentimes be the sharpest part of the rally. Here's a breach of uptrend resistance. Here's a breach of uptrend resistance. Here's a breach of uptrend resistance. 
Uh, what's that 3256? Hold on one sec. Okay. I'm sorry about that. That's a misquote on this retracement. That doesn't belong there. That belongs there. Sorry about that. I think that's on there as well for last night's report, actually, guys. Yeah. So it's not 92.56, okay? Although, <laughs> if you use that as a target, you just hit, um, or you're about to hit. Uh, but just higher, guys. I have a soft target at 92.86 into 92.96. So you're looking at those uh, close reversal high there um, for September. And then uh, I think it's an extraneous swing low. But nice little pivot zone there is the first level on the upside. And then up into 93.27. So the point is, is this a choke point now or not? There's a couple of different renditions that you could look at this from a slope standpoint that would suggest, well, maybe you want to be a little bit more cautious. You know, if we just take off the highs, parallel that, you can see pretty decent slope here. Um, my point is, if you're not involved here already, my point wasn't to tempt you yesterday. We're looking for an inflection here. If there's no kickback, there's nothing to do on the long side. We're chasing, guys. You don't want to buy at multi-month highs here. With There's no respectable stop. So we're more... Benef it's more benefit for us to look for the pullback and see if we can counter support A at upslope support here at this 20 at 75% parallel if it breaks back below or at channel support here. Both of those bring you back basically into 90, 9160s, 9150s uh, for support. Upside from here, like I said, basically right into 93 and then 9327 is going to be the bigger one. Excuse me, 9322. That 38 too. Questions on Swissy. Really strong performer. And then again, could be the tell. And this is one of the other reasons I brought up uh, Peso yesterday. Uh, Peso seems interesting to me because that level we had highlighted uh, last week continues to hold with precision. Okay, here's what Peso looked like last night. Well, let me come back to the scalp in a moment. Here's the daily chart. Big level of resistance we talked about a while ago. This is the lows that we made in September. This is the low that you made in October. Concrete lows, breaks on accelerated drop. That's right here. 100 off the low, two equal legs gives you 20.94.16 into 20.83.77. Okay, big zone. Here's what it looks like on a daily close basis. Again, divergence all up and down this thing, 1.2 point, 2 point, 3 point. Now, I highlight, I highlight the divergence for two factors. A, if it's going to exhaust, this is big resistance and momentum is lacking. With the same respect, just as we were talking about dollar Swiss with the breach of upslope resistance, if this breaches, okay, you've got... I mean, again, I don't want to get too crazy with the with the resistance triggers, but you've got that divergence signal, which in and of itself would be sort of a signal to the upside if we clear 2094 on a closed basis and momentum clears that slope on a closed basis. That would break the divergent signal of higher highs and lower highs, and it would necessitate a breach above a key resistance zone, a lateral resistance zone, and slope resistance zone on the daily chart. So big levels. And I think, like I said, uh, like I told you guys yesterday, watch this in relation to the dollar, because this could be a tell on whether the dollar turn is legit uh, that we saw into the close of last month, or whether there's going to be a little bit more back and forth here. Um, a topside breach, there's really nothing until like the June low. So you're looking at like 21 um, for 45.90. So big zone of resistance, watch for a break. All things held constant. This is a really clean weekly opening range right below resistance. So not one that I'm actually, you know, actively operating on, guys, but definitely something to keep an eye out as it could be that sort of forward tell, again, um, to get some clarity there on the dollar. So that is dollar peso. And again, just as a reference, remember where dollar peso is coming on from the weekly charts, right? 
This is the same chart, guys. Nothing's changed. Just to show you the weekly perspective for peso, it's also a basic 236 retracement of the decline at 2102. Basic slope. Channel resistance we've been following off the highs from June. Right? It's pretty loaded. So keep your eye on that level. Look for inflection. Again, if we breach the highs, there might be quite a run ahead here for dollar peso. All right, let's jump into gold. Iman, you still trading gold as uh, often as I remember you? Here's gold. What a play. What a level. Um, just absolutely fantastic levels that we've been that we've been mapping out here. This thing has been textbook since the start of the year. Here's your yearly open. Let me drop the marker. It's been enough uh, time has passed here. Yearly open posted an outside reversal day. We slammed lower. The whole focus was 1763, 1767. We talked about this for a long time. Held there last week, broke this week, even almost tested his resistance. We turned like literally just pips ahead of it this week before moving lower. From the weekly standpoint, I really don't have a lot until, or anything significant, I should say, until we get into 1689. I'll show you the, the scalp in a moment. I do have some soft targets up here, but right now, we're essentially testing the highs from March of last year. Uh, just ahead of that, like I said, we have that 618 retracement of last year's entire range. Um, key resistance right back at 1767. The day, the weekly chart on this is 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 clear as day. Now, once you get into the into the tighter time frames, it starts to look a little more precarious for the bears. So, here's the daily chart, right? Momentum, uh, I don't want to call this divergence, but if we take a closer look, right, you're seeing a higher low in the oscillator and a lower low in price. Don't take my word for it. Always look at the closes. Here's the two reference points. That's a lower low. Well, that's a slightly higher low. Not a reason to get bullish or not a reason to cease being bearish, but a cautionary tone. Cautionary tone. All right, well, what about price? Is there anything support-wise we should be worried about? Oof. Well, not really, except for the fact that you're testing downslope support, right? So if you're holding shorts, uh, it's a good time to clean it up a little bit, bring your stops down to break even or better. Definitely better than break even at this point. But the next confluence zone on the daily chart appears stop traffic. Same thing as the weekly, back at that 19, 1690 level. 618 retracement of last year's range. Okay. Near term resistance, you got the monthly open now at 1733. Again, 1767. You know, I left bearish inval up here, guys, at the low day close that we made back here in February before turning, but uh, it, it's really 1670. Uh, it, it, excuse me, it's really 1767 for me. If we get through this, um, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really want to be involved in this trade anymore at least on the short side. From the intraday chart, and this is where it's most interesting, here's what that same slope looks like on the two hour. Just really clear. High, low, high, slope support. We've been straddling this the whole week, still in near-term resistance, but look the, low, the lower parallel. The soft target that we had highlighted was 1703, that hit yesterday. Okay, um, but it's really that 618. That's the level you need to break to see the next leg lower. And the next leg lower from 1690 is nothing until 1648. You're basically looking for like 1650 to complete two equal legs off the high if this breaks. All right, um, Iman says, not yet, Michael. I was in a pause uh, state for the last time, but was just following your forecast. Right on. Well, let's get back into it, Iman. Look at this. Setup is clean, looking for inflection down here. So 1703, 1690. It's a $13 range to be very cautious of the decline. Looking for inflection. A downs, like I said, a downside break here and is likely an accelerated move. But the immediate decline on the momentum that we've been seeing. Again, yesterday I highlighted this on the report as well. You're seeing three divergent points here on the two hour. And this doesn't look like a lower low, but like I always say, bring it into the close. Boom, boom, boom. Three divergence points. So cautionary tale. 
cautionary tale. Still bearish, sub-1750, 1746, but the near term, that declines at risk into 1690. Questions on gold. So a quick segue into silver, because someone was asking about this in the webinar yesterday, and I don't, you know, haven't really been a fan of actively tracking silver because of this. Here's the weekly chart. This is a mess. You know what I mean? I didn't see anything here that was like pressing or super interesting, but upon review, again, from all the questions I've been getting on it, I just kind of made a quick reassertion here. Here's a two-point touch. You can call that a three-point touch trend line support, which converges on this year's low week reversal close. Not only was it low week reversal close, it was an outside weekly reversal off the lows. That's important. That's support. That's 2546. Now, interestingly enough, if you take 2546 and you just kind of keep that in your head, um, here's what the daily chart looks like. 2546 is like right here. Where is it? Right around right here. Right? Look right ahead of it is what we're looking at right now. This is the 618 extension of the decline off the highs. And this is the 50% retracement of the ascent off the lows. So now both of those converge on a little bit different of a slope complex that we've been looking at. Let me zoom this out for a little bit. And you know what? Let me uh, just clean this up a little bit. There we go. So basic slope, the original slope, here's a parallel, break, support, support, little dribble there, support, support, and that's what we're testing right now. Here's a newly added pitchfork just off the high, low, high. Here's a 25% line, support, support, looking for something here today. If we break the downside, the 618 of just the range off the highs, off the lows in September gives you 2488. And again, that 100 is at 2413. Uh, bullish inval, key resistance at this point, the level you'd want to be respectful for. You know, typically I would say the yearly high day close, but I don't even think we need to be that high. I think it's more like this, the high day close from that late February swing, the reversal close that gets to like 2764. Here's what it looks like on the intraday. And again, you can see the ongoing divergence into the lows here. So it's turning out to be heading to the close of the week, a little bit tired on all these tra trades. They're coming some big supports. They're kind of ranging along the lows. Don't get suckered in, but definitely look for inflection and a clear guidance here uh, as we get into the March opening range. Okay, so that's gold and silver. One, two, three, four, five, and number six. Here's number seven, uh, dollar CAD. So for dollar CAD, it looks like this. Um, take you real quick through this thing. I don't think we need to go through this in depth again, but 26, you know, 2580, 2619 is the level that we've been focused on. We haven't gotten a weekly close below that. While the weekly closes are above, um, Eman, Bitcoin's on the list. I got you. While the weekly closes are above, the downside broader bias is at risk. We've been saying that. We've been saying that. We've been saying that. We got the rejection uh, into the close of last month, right, with the outside day reversal popping higher. And ever since the start of the week, ever since the start of March, we've been saying we're looking for support. We're looking for another downside exhaustion in this zone if this reversal is legit. You can go to the previous update. Oop. Here was our last update on uh, on dollar CAD, and again you can go to the previous update from last month, and here was that rejection, and the break higher. So we're now just trying to focus on all right. Well, this sort of breach on the pullback does it hold key support here, and that's what we're still trying to assess right now. We kind of bobbled and turned right ahead of it. Here's what it looked like earlier in the week. Was kind of looking for a low there. We got pretty damn close. Um, popped back higher. It's kind of been a, a lackluster trade. 
So I'm still think, I'm still thinking the same idea. Uh, if we get the drive lower, 2575, 2580 is where I'd love to see some stringent support here and maybe a reaction off that level. Uh, one thing, and again, this is kind of going into the rap, you know, down the rabbit hole, but if, if this was a more concrete low, that's my concern is that two equal legs, if this is the wave interpretation instead of this one, would take you down into the 2520s. So I'm kind of cautious on dollar CAD here. I'm not really gonna get involved again yet. I wanna see how this pans out. Our assumptions are that we are bottoming here, but it could be a little bit more of a lengthier process. And if we break below 2575, yeah, sure, it could still drop till 2520. It's another 50 pips. I don't wanna be sitting in it, but even then, it still might be just a test of slope support, two equal legs, correction over, back onto the horses, back off to the races. Um, not my favorite scenario. My favorite scenario is still for failure somewhere ahead of this zone uh, with a breach above 2720. Uh, again, putting you right on, on track to that 28 handle. But we need to be, able, again, cautious here. End of the day, here's your Monday, Tuesday stretch. What was that? Just a test of the of the weekly opening range lows could be it's a pretty ugly weekly opening range but nonetheless we haven't cleared that march trend line and that's kind of the line in the sand that you want to put this whole thing in motion here it's in red here it's in blue it's the same slope just to close above that certainly at least onset a rally towards 27 and above don't forget that the monthly open objective open comes in right above here too so levels are mapped out pretty clean. We just need some momentum. We just need some momentum on this thing. Okay, so that's dollar CAD. It says very similar scenario with all the commodity currencies. So here's Aussie. And here's Aussie as it looked uh, back a couple of days ago. You know, we had rallied off of uptrend support. And then we kind of failed here. We've been ranging ever since. We haven't done jack on this. Um, well, let me just take you a quick round trip for Aussie, here's Aussie on the weekly charts. Big old outside weekly reversal off the high is typically a bearish development. This is your first test on the recovery. Wanna see 78.36 hold if we are heading lower. Well, this week's high, you bet it, right here at 78.36. Bearish inval, we targeted at the high day close. And that's 78.71. Anything above that, and you're just looking straight resumption for the uptrend. There's no point in trying to fight it. Here's what it looks like on the intraday. And here is what it looked like, again, earlier in the week. So we rallied into this region, kind of got stuck, got stuck there, 78.37. Weekly opening range is set right above slope support. It's either a break below 77.30, or if we breach here, we highlighted bearish invalidation at the high day close. Look what that converges on. 10 pips higher is the 618 retracement of this decline. So a good zone to kind of mark as your bearish inval. If this is a bigger turn, no advances should be surpassing this region. A break below 7730s, and you're looking for that move on 7630 and 7618. And Kiwi's the same exact setup, okay? Um, the high day close and the 618 here converge even tighter. It's not a 10 pip range, it's like a two pip range, 7367 into 7369. That's again, max where you'd wanna see any advances, rebounds, recoveries in Kiwi bounce to um, with a break of the weekly opening range lows here. Again, 7150 is a soft target. You're really looking for 71. I don't have any downslope here, which is kind of what bothers me on trying to be too aggressive on it or even looking for where failure should be. I'm still working with failure of the upslope. So we'll want to see something kind of fail here if it's moving lower. Obviously, the downside break, you're right on track. Big levels for Kiwi. Okay, that's all I got.
on the currency front. Let's jump into SPX Bitcoin and then we'll jump into your questions, March, in there on some of the crosses. Here's what SPX looks like. So crazy how this thing has continued to trade with precision. So no change on the Kiwi setup uh, from the second either, guys. Levels are unchanged. We're just ranging right here. Here's what SPX looked like back on the 28th of February. We were hitting to this huge confluence support zone. We said, watch out, guys. This is the opportunity for a little bit of a rally, but we're still in this bearish formation. So if it rallies, look for sort of failure near the 618. Well, it got past the 618, but boy, that pitchfork held like a charm. Okay, uh, 3880 was the 618. We made it above 39. But look at that top side pitchfork resistance, resistance, resistance. Here's the turn lower. Guess where we are, guys? Right here again. Right here again. Full round trip. Support is 37.82 into 37.92. That's the pivot. That's the level to beat. That's what the bears need to break today to get this thing moving down. Immediate downside is at risk while above this near-term resistance. Now you want to drop that right into this confluence zone right near 3840s. And let me just see this real quick. 382 is there. 236. I don't want to stress that 236, but... Okay, let's just leave this here for argument's sake. Try to clean this up. Everything else stays the same. Ideally, if we are heading lower in SPX, if there's a larger correction at hand here, the 100 off the high, guys, by the way, um, is right down here, right? That's why this is so significant in my mind, because if we do break this, it would be more on the lines of near-term trend reversal as opposed to just correction. Um, but if we are heading lower, failure ahead of 38.55, 38.50, downside break from here, I don't, again, I don't really have anything till 37.43. You might want to test that low there, maybe 37.50s, but it's really 37.34 if we break here. This is big, huge, huge region. Here's the daily chart. All right, so you're at support. You're at support, exclamation point, end of paragraph. Something to note. Okay, so that says PX, uh, Bitcoin. So, man, here's what I'm looking at with Bitcoin. This level has actually, the levels have actually been pretty darn clean. Again, we do this in log scale uh, for the sake of um, just clarity here on a percent-based move, but this basic low-high low, high, low has been pretty, pretty, pretty decent. So here's a 75% line, call on the high, turning lower, break of the seven, of uh, the 25% parallel. Just saw a test of resistance. This is a 618 of the drop. The whole focus is on this immediate range. Now, I don't want to get into the whole discussion on the fundies, if there is fundies, I guess, but the macro type of argument that could be made that the risk that you're seeing exit the market is going to more manifest itself in Bitcoin. And over the last couple of days, you've seen that argument come out. I talked about it just briefly yesterday in the webinar about the inflationary hedge and how people are segueing into gold and how the Bitcoin trade is, 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 is essentially benefiting from that, as you can see over the last couple of days with Bitcoin kind of at least holding its own, right, while gold sells off. I don't necessarily buy that whole conversation, and I don't necessarily want to trade off that either. But what I can say is that it turned from uptrend resistance, it bobbled and rebounded off of uptrend support, and now it's getting rejected off of uptrend resistance, all uptrend stuff. Nothing's broken uptrend support yet. So while we did like the pullback and we've been following this trade very closely, the rebound even, okay, that we just got, uh, is something that we've been talking about. I don't think I covered it here. I didn't give you an update here on on our side for a while, but 
even the rebound that we got, we've been following, has been pretty welcomed. This was the first, or this was the last level of sort of key resistance we wanted to see hold that we talked about on the Monday webinar, and we just got a rejection of it. Look, I don't know if it holds. If the risk-off trade continues to accelerate or if SPX breaks the lows, I'd be hard-pressed to get too aggressive on a short. Um, but watch this consolidation break is all I can say. Watch this consolidation break. Now, if the dollar does break higher, that adds fuel to the fire for the possibility of a deeper correction here in Bitcoin. Obviously, priced in dollars as the dollar strengthens, it'll put downside pressure on this. But if those calls for you know the safety trade, digital gold, and all this is in fact manifesting in, in price action, guys, then you know, breach above the high day close and you're right back off to the races, 60,000 and above. So, man, it's it's a pretty important time. One thing I will know, and one thing we did talk about last week, guys, is where we are from a momentum standpoint, right? On a break back from overbought territory, just a quick study of the last couple of times in Bitcoin that we've broken back from overbought. Each one of those time periods has been followed by a, a couple of weeks, if not months, of back and forth capitulation. Uh, here's the first time, wasn't the most convincing time, but here's the next time we broke 70 in momentum. That stayed lateral for like three months. Here's the last time we broke below 70 again, that stayed lateral for another two months. Here's another break below 70 in momentum. That was lateral, a range bound consolidatory for another month. Here's another break below 70. That one was back and forth. I wouldn't necessarily say it was range bound. It's more downside, but the whole thing was governed by the monthly low. So you never even made another stab at a new low. Here's the next break below 70. And again, a time period we could see some more sideways, some more capitulation back and forth. That doesn't invalidate or make this less significant, but just sets an expectation, you know? Uh, everyone's jumping in, thinking for the resumption trade of 70,000 next week, or thinking for the corrective trade of 30,000 next week. It, it might take a couple more days, more weeks, but the levels are clear. Hey man, does that help? On Bitcoin? Here's the new monthly marker, by the way, for this month. Okay. Uh, to the maximum, as always, Eman says. Thank you. Hey, you're more than welcome. Always good to see you back in the room. So that is Bitcoin. All right. Uh, your questions, Marchin. You want to look at uh, Aussie Kiwi and Kiwi CAD. So let's check out Aussie Kiwi first. Um, let's see where that thing is doing. It's been a while since we checked this one out. Okay, super tight yearly opening range so far, right? Um, and actually a series of higher lows and a series of lower highs. I would interpret this as a consolidation. Not crazy about this pitchfork. But looks very crunchy to me. Let's look at Aussie Key here on the daily. Hmm. Yeah, this is crunch, crunch, crunch. I don't have a, wouldn't have a strong opinion on this one, Marchin. And also, 
look at the look at the prevailing price action. Is this from here? Do you think? Yeah, that's even a wider. So it's a three point touch that puts more emphasis on the consolidation. Uh, this is a coil, man. And again, look at the uh, relative performance of Aussie and Kiwi as well. They've both been crunched into support versus the dollar, and they're just kind of sitting there, right? So I wouldn't be too surprised to see some back and forth lateral action here. Um, I wouldn't really be interested unless it clears 108 on the upside or the monthly open on the downside. So if you get a break below like 106.45, specifically last month's open is just below that, and that's this month's opening range lows. So let's say specifically if you were to crunch into this zone a little bit later in the month um, and break that slope, 106, 106.40 is where it starts. Kind of that's where you're looking for more of a validated break. Until that does, man, that's that's all I'd be looking at here. You're right middle, mid-trend, mid-range, mid-everything. That's not what you want to be trading off of. So not a big fan of Aussie Kiwi here. Kiwi CAD might be something different. Um, because the reversal there at least came off of a big region. So I think I, I think we you, someone you asked about this earlier, um, either this year or in the month. But here's that parallel, the same slope we were following from the pitchfork off the lows of the year. Or I guess this was last year's low in the 2019 low. Um, resistance, a couple of bobbles here, a couple of bobbles here, but still pretty clean, right? Divergence off the highs, three last reference points, one, two, and three. Lower high, lower high, lower high. So I'd be more of the, I'd be more in favor of a larger pullback here. But again, I'd put a cautionary note on this uh, March in with regards to the fact that you're seeing similar price action on all the commodity currencies. So while CAD, I think, has been sort of the laggard, I think dollar CAD, um, CAD losses could outpace um, Kiwi losses at this point. That's what kind of makes me concerned about this pair trying to get too aggressive on the short. Because your bigger level on the upside would be like a 94 tap and then a reversal. This is pretty convincing. Love the way that it ducked back below that initial monthly opening range from last month. Love the momentum profile. But until we break upslope support and maybe something a little bit more concise. Like this. Is that a parallel? It's almost a whole complete parallel. Close. Too early, but I just want to see what this looks like. Okay. And we got to adjust that retracement. Hold on one sec. Okay, so here's your yearly open. So if we were to get a little creative here and just work with the yearly range on this retracement, I bet you we'll find that the 618 is right there. Okay. Okay, let's stick with that. Marchin, uh, see how this pans out. See how this pans out. So I I was hoping for a little bit more confluence here with these lateral levels on the slopes that we're watching, but two levels to keep in mind. Basically right here with that slope off the low. Again, this is basic, basic trend line support, right? Right there. Uh, you got a 618 of the yearly range there as well. 
look for an inflection there. If you get below it and you get below the median line, you're basically looking for a drop into like the 90 handle. 90, 60 is a 38, two, And then those lows, former swing highs, really nice pivot comes in at 90. I remember that level well. So uh, something like this, Marchin, on the breakdown, you would want to see resistance here bearish invalidation. I wouldn't even try to fight it if it goes beyond 92.50. Why? That's the weekly opening range high. That's the monthly opening range high. That's the 618, 1618 extension, the former swing highs. And again, kind of invalidate. You don't want to get aggressive on this. Um, it's the break below here that's going to be the tell. Rebounding, these are levels you'd want to see exhaustion at. Marchin, does that make sense? Interesting set. I think a little bit more conviction definitely than the Aussie Kiwi at this point, just because of where you're trading from a, tra a trend standpoint. Um, but certainly use some caution right here. This is like the initial support you'd want to be paying attention to. Okay. Well, if there's nothing else, we'll go ahead and wrap it up here. I'm surprised I didn't get any uh, questions from Ted here. Here's Aussie CAD, man. That reversal came down big time. It's still sitting with a very similar stance that the, the Scalp has kind of gone gone the way here and, and got really messy once it broke that trend. So I'm not really focused on this right now. I'm focused on this. Monthly open support converges uh, in the next couple of days on that slope, as long as, as well as the, the range lows from that spike drop we made last month. So uh, if that was a false break, just a kind of spike try attempt and failure at resistance, it's the break of last week's low here that'll put you back on the much larger corrective stance there for Aussie Cat. So keep an eye on that as well. All right, guys, wrapping up a, a strong week. Best of luck into the head into the end of the weekend. Watch out heading into non-farm payrolls tomorrow. I don't really think markets are necessarily poised. There's so much going on, guys, in the background that I think is going to be coming more to the market forefront than necessarily non-farm payrolls. Um, it just doesn't seem like the markets are kind of poised and ready to act on that. That being said, the variable is always the caveat. A big miss on either side could get this thing jump started, especially with where dollar is trading right now. Important to pay attention tomorrow. Remember, expecting a print of 182,000 um, and employment to hold, unemployment to hold 6.3%. Best of luck trading. Stay nimble until the end of the week. Have a great weekend. Jay, Iman, uh, Agnes, March, and everyone in the room. And I will see you guys uh, on Monday for the free session. We're right back here. Next week will be our last uh, abridged version. Uh, for the pilot I'm running for Daily FX. So we'll be back here on Thursday, and then we'll be uh, right back to our normal schedule in the following week. Have a great weekend, guys. Cheers.